In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the models, which really look much more snowy and much colder, even in the near term, starting as early as the first week of January. Let's dive into things. We're going to see multiple heavy snowstorms today. Actually, what's surprising is over the past 24 to 36 hours, we have seen the GFS model and the European model come to great agreement on a major snowstorm for the Northeast, which is coming kind of out of nowhere. Uh, so we're going to see that happen. And then also colder air overall in more transitional type fashion. So what it's going to do is kind of warm up and then cool down and then warm up and then cool down. Instead of just having cold for the entirety of the next two weeks, we're going to see this back and forth battle, uh, which is good for cold and snow lovers because if we have snow or storms in general moving along those colder air masses it doesn't matter what the temperatures were three days ago it doesn't matter what the temperatures are going to be in two days what matters is that there's a storm and there's cold air now and they come together and that's what i always talk about when i say the ingredients coming together is something like that and in this particular model run we do see that happen now it is still you know around five days out maybe six so we want to take it with a bit of a grain of salt but the fact that we have these two models coming to agreement is making it look a lot more likely that there will be a storm somewhere. There could just be some movement. So that's going to be what we're watching for over the coming days. Let's move through this, you know, overnight tonight into the new year. I can't believe we're heading into 2024, but really we don't see too much in the way of storminess. Uh, in general, I'd say the most of the activity is happening here across the Ohio Valley and Mid-Atlantic, where we do actually have some snowfall showers occurring in states like Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York could be cool to see some flakes flying, but nothing much more than that. Uh, some lake effect snowfall as these lakes are still relatively warm because of those warm temperatures we had in December. So as we have this cold air mass heading over, it is creating these heavy lake effect snowfall bands. So some of those areas in New York, Ohio and Pennsylvania, very close to the lakes could have some heavier, quick squalls of snowfall. And that could be impactful for your travel tonight. So be sure uh, to be safe out there in that case. And in any case, of course, but definitely be watching that weather as heavy snowfall can quickly deter deteriorate uh, conditions there on the road, of course. As we keep going, we see those snowfall showers kind of persist. Cooler air, I'm not going to call it severely below normal temperatures, but, you know, definitely cooler air sticks around through the second and even third here of January. What's interesting is we kind of have this polar influence. And again, like we mentioned in the previous video, which was extremely educational, by the way. So if you want to check that out, be sure to do so. But this air is going to warm up as it heads down. It's still going to be cold enough to where if we could see this storm try to impact areas that are a little bit cooler, we could see some snowfall come out of it. Also keep in mind on this day, which is again Wednesday the 3rd here, we do have some snowfall occurring here for the western seaboard, especially in your Sierra Nevadas there, but also extending northward into your Cascade Mountains also. As we reach towards Thursday, this is what we end up seeing from this system on the east. We have the jet stream doing something like this, so it's trying to ridge here over the Rockies. Kind of a little mini dip, double dip trough, but surely the, the biggest trough here is going to be in the east. And we actually do perhaps get some northern extent snowfall here from Virginia all the way up through southern New England. Definitely something to watch as this could impact states like Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and perhaps Massachusetts as well. On the very northern extent of that precipitation, uh, as you can see, I mean, this low is here. We still have a few days to go. We have some broad low pressure in this area. If this was the trend northward towards maybe, let's say, 50 to 100 miles further north, we would be seeing perhaps a little bit more activity in this corridor here. We see blue within that circle. It's certainly cold enough. If we could get that precipitation field a little bit further north, you'd be looking at a little bit more of a winter storm out of this one. And with 99 hours to go, I would say there's still some time for these models to switch up their, their theme here with this one. But it's going to be something to watch. Certainly not our highest chance of snowfall in this model run that we'll see, though. So we'll move on in a little bit and take a look at that. We have some pretty heavy snowfall occurring down here for the four corner states as well. Your southern jet is really active and moving across these regions just like this. So that's where a lot of our major storms are moving through. And we have a couple that are moving in with this northern jet moving in like this. And this is why you can see the northern one, the southern one both impacting the west coast so that's why activity has been really ripe out there 
as we head towards Thursday afternoon, we do see, again, this low continues to develop, but it's way too far offshore. Again, if we do get it a little bit further north here, we would have some initial activity in this area, perhaps enough for one to three inch snowstorm, maybe a little bit more if that low trends northward. Wouldn't bet on that happening, though. I'm just trying to point out some possibilities here for you guys. We've seen surprising things happen over the past 24 to 36 hours in these models, so definitely expect the unexpected. Be prepared for anything. Uh, but that is not the most likely case scenario in the world, to be quite frank. Now, we get an interesting storm developing here by Saturday the 6th. This is going to be just about past five days out. We have a 997 here near the deeper south states like Alabama and Georgia, creating some snowfall here across the southern regions of that Ohio Valley in Illinois and Indiana here. Definitely featuring some cold air behind it. And as this all moves eastward, we will see this kind of come together here in a very interesting fashion. The low kind of develops here and then starts to slide offshore, which is going to be classic Miller B nor'easter type activity for it to move out over the mid-Atlantic and northeast. So this is your Miller B, by the way. I'm going to use this as an opportunity to teach you guys something. Miller A would be all the way up the coast from the Gulf into the east coast. So that would be Miller A there for nor'easters. That's your two main types of nor'easters. Of course, anything is possible in between these or even further north than that Miller B. But this is your typical nor'easters. And then, you know, within some deviation of each would be considered each one. Uh, obviously, if it moved right in the middle, it'd be kind of debatable. But mostly Miller A is going to come from the Gulf off the southeast coast to move all the way up. Your Miller B is going to do what this one's doing and kind of move offshore from the mid-Atlantic and head northward from that point. Now, this storm here on this European model does look very juicy, is what I would probably call it. Indiana, Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, portions of Maryland and West Virginia getting involved, even up through New York. And instead of switching over to rain like we've seen a lot, what we see is actually... This low moves offshore is a 985 millibar low pressure center, and we actually have more cold continuing to move in. So we're going to see more and more areas switch over to snowfall as this low gets further offshore. Still by overnight, Saturday into Sunday, the 6th into the 7th, we have heavy snowfall occurring for a lot of these areas. Uh, definitely a, a very impactful system if that does occur. And look, that is the exact storm that we see on the GFS model in a minute. So spoiler alert, that's what we're going to see. I want to zoom into the northeast real quickly. What we're actually going to do is take a look specifically at your 24-hour snowfall totals. Actually, we need to go longer than that. Let's do the two-day here. There we go. So this is just from this storm on your European model, and this is what it's showing. This is 10 to 1 ratio, by the way, and a lot of areas might get more than that. What this means is 10 inches of snow per every 1 inch of liquid precipitation. Oftentimes, when it gets colder, you get more like 15 to 1 or 20 to 1 ratios. Sometimes where it's warmer, you'll get more like 7 to 1. Uh, so it does deviate a little bit beneath and above that, but mostly you're looking at more than 10 to 1 oftentimes. So we can expect that this is actually a more conservative uh, forecast, you know, when we're considering what it's actually showing. Of course, we don't know if it's going to be this juiced up or amped up this storm, but uh, certainly for what it's showing, they, they could even be more than this uh, for what storm we see here on this particular model. But it could mean 10 inches plus for West Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, even eastern Ohio there, western New York, into northern New Jersey there, the Catskills and the Adirondacks, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, Massachusetts, even Connecticut and Rhode Island. I've seen you guys' with comments, especially in this corridor here. We've gotten a lot of complaints with people just begging for snowfall to occur. It's been years and years and years, even most shockingly in areas of Massachusetts and Connecticut. I mean, it's been years since you guys have even seen a multi-inch snowstorm from what I've heard, which is ridiculous for you guys. So I am cheering for everybody in here to see their first major snowstorm in a long time. This would certainly turn the tide, and I'm sure it would put a smile on a lot of y'all's faces. And I'm sure a lot of you would feel a lot more encouraged about the overall winter and not feel like it was a complete disaster, uh, which I would love to see for you guys. Honestly, I don't live anywhere near there, but I'm, I'm cheering for all of you. Of course, We're on the same team here. We do get storm number, I guess we'll call it three, but really out of the legitimate chances that we're seeing right now, it's storm number two. We're kind of considering that second, third possibility storm as number one, but again, likelihood like luck looking a little less extreme. We talked about yesterday the cold moving into the west where there's plenty of snow and then moving eastward how this is creating much more intense cold than if they're coming from the north where there's no snowpack in these areas. 
So this is certainly kind of coming true at this point on these models. We get this low kind of just riding along the southern edge of that jet stream. And we get heavy snowfall for Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio here. Very heavy Ohio Valley snowstorm. As we progress things, it does move a little bit northward. But we get some interesting development. This is very far out, by the way, so take it with a grain of salt. Our most likely snowstorm is the one we saw prior to this. This one is a little bit more up in the air. But they all start like this, right? We always see these kind of long-range chances. And then they either fizzle out or they increase in chance. So we have to treat it as a possibility. Not a probability, of course, but definitely a possibility. We have a 984 set up over eastern Indiana, but we see this low developing offshore of the east coast as a 997. So a lot of this energy is trying to transfer offshore. In this specific scenario, if we saw a majority of the pressure change and really the energy from this storm move offshore, we would start to see a much snowier solution along this eastern corridor. If this low over here stays the main one, it's going to be much more of a Great Lakes and Ohio Valley system. So uh, there's low one, because this is our initial low, and there's low two. And this would be a balance of seeing which one looks to be the primary one over time. Definitely hope this happens, because this is a very interesting scenario to track. And I would love to just have multiple model runs to track every single day, wondering which low is going to be the primary one overall. Definitely would be a battle, but look at how this one takes over. Now the eastern one is a 984, the western one's a 998. So we see all of that energy almost transfer to the east coast one. And then we really start to see things light up for Pennsylvania northward through into New England. So another major snowstorm on this model run according to this one. Now the GFS model will go into snowfall totals for the entire run in just a minute, by the way. But your GFS model, let me know if this looks familiar. We get a little bit more snowfall and a little bit more of a northern extent on this initial low. So that's, again, why I'm considering it a possibility. There's still even more room for this to trend northward, which would, of course, increase the snow probabilities for these areas, mostly along the Appalachian Mountains. Moving towards the east coast, once it gets to New England, there could be a minor to moderate snowfall event if this really, really adds up together correctly. As of now, it doesn't look like anything major, but I'm, again, just pointing out all possibilities here for you guys. As we keep going, though, that low is a lot closer to the East Coast than we saw in the European model. I mean, this is threateningly close to being something a little bit more major for New England. Uh, just not quite there yet. There's a little bit of time to go, but if in a couple days we're still seeing this solution, it's going to be time to write off that threat for the very, very beginning of January. We can see that over time, as we reach Saturday the 6th, we do begin to see this low. Again, developing over Tennessee as a 992, heavy snowfall throughout the Ohio Valley. Again, your cold is moving straight from west to east, which is cr creating more potent cold air than we've seen all winter because there's plenty of snow and ice in here cooling down the air as opposed to this area here, which is not really blanketed in much snow. We're not seeing anything in here. So all of these Arctic blasts that are moving through this area are weakening already by the time they get to these X's that I've drawn. So that's why those ones are less potent. We have plenty of snow out west. So as this moves over, we get much more potent Arctic air that way actually which is very very unique i would say now we get this east coast snowstorm tell me if this looks familiar again to what we saw in the european model developing over the delmarva very strong low heavy snowfall throughout virginia west virginia maryland pennsylvania new york i feel like i just named off all these states and then that continues into new england as a very very intense snowstorm that eventually comes to an end let's go ahead and do the same thing here i'm going to zoom in for you guys and we're going to do the th the two-day snowball here again. Let me get it far back enough, though. Oh, wait. We switched model runs here. We got to get a little bit more advanced with this. So let's get towards this snowstorm. A little bit more south-based, obviously. We're getting a lot less here on the northern extent of New England. But we get a lot more on the southern extent, which is going to be for areas like Virginia, West Virginia, into Maryland. All of Pennsylvania getting a you know, solid 10 to 15 inches from this. And then southern New York as well from the Finger Lakes through into the Catskills, looking at about 10 inches plus according to the GFS model. And then southern New England, mostly Massachusetts and especially Connecticut and Rhode Island, seeing again close to 10, 15 inches, maybe even closing in on 20 in some of these spots. So certainly a very, very intense snowstorm on both model runs. Looks very similar. So let's zoom back in on this European model I want to just compare. We're all over the place today, but I promise you this is going to kind of be useful here even though I'm really all over the place. So let's go back. This is snowstorm number one here, right there. So here's the European model. Here's the GFS model. 
You can tell the tilt, you know, on the European model, the, the, the major area of snowfall is going to look something like this. Obviously, the GFS model is a little bit different. We'll draw the GFS in red right here, or orange, and we get a little bit more of a flat uh, snowfall field here uh, for southern New England. So certainly a different tilt, but the same idea, and honestly, very similar amounts too. We're getting right around 10 to 15 in the bullseye here for both models. So seeing this level of agreement, I mean, we can all agree that for being five, six, seven days out, this is really good agreement. I mean, obviously they're a little bit off with the tilt, but they both have the storm, same date, same amount of snowfall intensity, just slightly different locations. But the southern end is actually very similar. It's mostly on the New England end where we're seeing some differentiating uh, results here. There's still a chance this storm does not happen, but this is the best chance we've had all winter for the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic by far. We've, we're seeing great agreement. It's within 10 days. And, you know, honestly, the next 24 to 48 hours are going to be vital because once we've moved within five days, the likelihood of this actually happening is going to dramatically increase over time. So something to watch and something to finally be excited about. I would say it's finally safe to be pretty excited about this potential threat as odds are looking good at this point. We get some storms moving on shore to the west overall, but look at the intensity of the amount of precipitation in the east here. I mean, absolutely crazy totals. That's two to five inches of liquid precipitation in all of those red areas, and we're seeing that across the eastern third of the nation in, in its entirety. Here's the total snowfall for the European model on both storms. I mean, we get plenty out west, and this has been the case. No big surprises there, but mostly... It's this area here that is extremely surprising as we're getting tons and tons of snow. We'll zoom in in a minute, but also another thing to note, if you watched yesterday's video, look at how much snowfall we're getting in all of these areas. These areas can go from X's to checks in a hurry. If we pick up a good snowpack in here, it's going to make it a lot colder later on when these cooldowns do move through. So huge improvements, not only on the imminent snowstorms in the east and cold air, but also for the long range just pattern overall, we're seeing things improve, which is going to make things a lot more likely to be good for the rest of January into February and even March. So a lot to be happy about as a cold and snow lover on this model run. Let's go ahead and zoom in. I'm going to see if we can see totals here um, on the eastern end of things. I mean, clearly this is extremely large and take it with a grain of salt because we have a storm that looks a little bit more likely but then we have that one at the very end, which this is considering the totals from those ones that are about 10 days out. We're going to want to take that one with a grain of salt. We might see a lot less than this if we don't see that ending storm. So we're seeing 20 inches plus in all these kind of pastel blue areas, a lot of snow. But if we don't see that second storm, this is what we end up with, uh, which certainly I'm sure everybody in the pink here would be completely happy with. I don't think we need 20 inches plus. Uh, to be, you know, fully satisfied. I think everybody would be very happy in here with this snowstorm that wants cold and snow, which a lot of people in my comments do. That's why I always refer to those people because 95% of people in my comments and that watch my video want snowfall. It's a much smaller percentage that are cheering for it to not happen. Um, I don't know why that is, but, you know, I'm trying to talk at a majority of my audience here. Obviously, considering that there is some of you that don't want it, but definitely in this area, it's looking a lot more likely than it has all winter long, like I said. Now, the GFS model's total snowfall here, also extremely large amounts from the plains into the upper Midwest and Great Lakes and into the Northeast. So let's take that Eastern view again. This is the 18Z model run, which I'm glad we're seeing this because look, Great agreement. So this is the 12Z model run that we were just using. This is brand new. I'm seeing this for the first time and we're seeing it stick with that first snowstorm for the 6th through the 7th there, as you can see. We haven't fully gotten through it. This is halfway through the storm. We still need to get some snowfall in here over the next 12 hours on this model run that isn't out yet, but it has not shifted from the 12Z run to the 18Z run here, as we can see. So definitely cool to see that live on the video. But here's the snowfall totals through that first storm. We already saw that. So let's just add that second one. And really, we don't get much more in the Northeast on the GFS model. We actually get more in this area. So you can tell, again, we were talking about that double low situation, how there's going to be one in here and one out here. And, you know, whichever one wins out is going to be really where the majority of the snowfall happens. Obviously, the European model, which I'll underline in red, primarily ends up giving this one the most energy and the GFS model, which we'll do in blue primarily in this case gives this one the most energy. So there's a huge debate if that storm does happen, which low is going to be the primary one. 
and the majority of precipitation and therefore snowfall is going to happen closer to that primary low. So that's why in this case, we see a majority of snowfall in this blue circle. And in the European model's case, uh, through the entire model run, you can see that we don't get nearly as much out, out west. I mean, look at this. I'm going to draw it in black here so we can actually see. But almost nothing in these areas on this European model. And when you look at the GFS model, huge differences there. Uh, but we get a lot more in the east here. Whereas the GFS model has a lot less there. Still a lot, but a lot less because it doesn't have that second storm. Don't mean to confuse you guys, but there's a lot going on here that I'm trying to unwrap in 10 to 15 minute videos, so it gets a little crazy. Temperature pattern, again, not going to be the coldest in the world, but we're going to see cool downs from time to time. Here's one from the first through the third for the east. We get that little brief warm up. Another cool down along the east, so cool down number two right here, already by the fifth. We're going to see that stick around for the sixth and seventh, eventually warming up after that storm comes through. Cool down, warm up. And then another big cool down here. So, you know, we're seeing like four, maybe even five snowstorms in, in this area here. So, I mean, really, really seeing a lot of cool downs in this pocket. And again, they're moving from the west all the way into the east as opposed to moving straight down from Canada. So we're not getting this one. We're getting this one. But there's a lot more cold and snow to work with in the west so we're getting them more potent when they come from the west than if they're coming straight from the north which is again extremely interesting and usually the opposite this year is very unique and different and it's interesting how we found a way to somehow end up with colder air despite the lack of snow and cold to the north it's just come in a very very um unconventional fashion which is interesting this is why i love weather so much there's so many variables at play and so many interesting things that go on every year every year is different than any year that's ever existed in weather and certainly i've never seen this type of a pattern before so this is a very unique one that we all get to track and experience together anyway i hope a lot of you are excited optimistic about this potential cold and snowy pattern we've been talking about it for weeks now and we're finally seeing a lot of good agreement on the models that you know we could see some things come together Again, I don't want to make you feel like there's a 100% chance this is going to happen, but chances are on the rise, which should make you feel good and optimistic if you want cold and snow because chances are getting better. We'll track this every day with you guys as we do upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.